Last time, we gave an overview of wheeled vehicles and how we see them in World of Tanks, and also how they are different from usual tracked vehicles. The new wheeled vehicles provoked a very heated discussion. Before we continue, we would like to thank players for their feedback and active discussion. And of course, you for your questions. There wasn't much information on many details in the last video. That makes sense because we were at an early development stage. In this video, we will try to provide you with some more details. We will talk about all the vehicles in the branch and take a look at every new mechanic. Of course, we will also discuss testing and our future plans. Testing of the first iteration of wheeled vehicles is coming to an end at the moment. We wanted to see how vehicles with so many new mechanics would integrate into the game, and how they would interact with current maps and other vehicle types. There is a Tier 8 vehicle on the Super Test currently, the Panar DBR. We are not just testing the vehicle balance settings, but mainly focusing on the general idea itself. Testing has shown that we created an active scout with interesting features. The vehicle integrated into the current ecosystem pretty well, and it doesn't conflict with other vehicle types. The second iteration starts in a few days, and we will perform initial tuning of each vehicle in the branch from tiers 10 to 6. The branch will have five researchable vehicles and one tier 8 premium vehicle. The transition to the wheeled vehicles will most likely start from tier 5 French light tanks. Also, a low tiered wheeled vehicle is currently in development. Now to a more detailed look at the branch. It doesn't have any non-historical or paper vehicles. Only the tier 10 vehicle was slightly changed compared to its historical counterpart. The rest of the candidates were forged in steel and even manufactured on a large scale. The first vehicle in the branch is the Panard 178B. It was developed in the 30s, primarily for the needs of the cavalry. It saw action in World War II and was one of the best armored vehicles in its class. The configuration of the vehicle is standard. Two axes, four wheels. It will serve as a transition from light tanks to wheeled vehicles. And its dynamics won't differ much from light tanks of the same tier. Its gun can reach a caliber of up to 75 millimeters. Quite enough for a tier 6 scout. Most importantly, with Pinar 178B, for the first time players will encounter and learn a new game mechanic available only with wheeled vehicles the lock-on feature. It was the most discussed point of the previous video. So let's get into the details. The wheeled vehicles move faster than tracked vehicles. It's important for their survivability. It's pretty hard for the player to maintain high speed, maneuver, not crash into anything, and keep targets in their sights. Mistakes are inevitable. Lock-on should help negate some of these mistakes. To enable auto-aim on other vehicles, the aim beam must be inside the opponent's tank silhouette. This is not necessary for wheeled vehicles. The game calculates the angle between the beam to center of the target and the aim beam. If the angle doesn't exceed a set value, which is 2.25 degrees in the moment, the target is locked. A new UI element appears, the Track Target Marker. It helps to keep track of the target in the heat of battle. The mechanic works based on angles, so the lock-on feature is more noticeable at greater distances. If the enemy is close, the aiming angle may align with or be inside the vehicle's outline, and there'll be no difference from the usual auto-aim. The lock-on feature will be enabled only when at least one of the vehicle's five checkpoints is visible. This will prevent locking onto targets that are behind cover. If there are multiple enemies within the allowed lock-on angle, the aim will lock on either the target closest to the center of the reticle or closest to you. It's important to remember that the lock-on feature will not aim at vulnerable points on vehicles for you. It works just like the standard auto-aim and doesn't give any advantages while shooting. We don't plan to add this feature to other vehicle types at the moment. It will be a particular characteristic of wheeled vehicles. The Panard 178B won't have all the mechanics of wheeled vehicles. They'll be added gradually with the new vehicles in the branch to allow players to get used to them and learn them step by step. The Hotchkiss EBR will be a Tier 7 vehicle. It was built in the late 40s and competed for serial production with another wheeled vehicle, the Panar EBR 75. It lost the competition, but managed to get into our game. 
The Hotchkiss EBR is armed like a regular light tank and is armed with several 75mm guns. Most importantly, it will look different and gets an additional axis and two more wheels. It is worth noting that wheels will provide additional opportunities and change the suspension damage model for all vehicles in the branch. You can already see it in action with the Panard EBR. If one wheel is damaged, the vehicle will not stop. It will keep on moving. However, not as fast, and maneuverability will suffer. It's pretty common for wheeled chassis. Most of the time, one damaged wheel can be ignored, as the vehicle will only stop after considerable damage to the suspension. At the same time, there are no specific conditions of vehicle stopping. It depends on a particular situation and terrain. Basically, the more wheels you have, the harder it is to stop you. Besides the additional axes, the Hotchkiss EBR will get a new mechanic called Boost. Boost doesn't work when the vehicle is on the move. To activate it, you need to stop. Then hold space and press the W key. The engine RPM increases. After you release space, the vehicle charges forward. It's convenient to use it when you need to cross a dangerous gap between covers or to change position quickly. For example, to perform a deceptive maneuver right in the face of danger. However, all good things come at a price. Boost use damages the engine. Current settings allow for three to five uses depending on the vehicle, but using it more than that is risky. When you approach the engine failure threshold, you will see a warning that you have one, maybe two uses left. If the engine is damaged, you may use a repair kit and then use Boost again. Full-featured wheel vehicles start at Tier 8. The AML Lynx is a pretty serious machine. In addition to Boost, it has another important feature of the wheel vehicles, switching movement modes. The vehicle has two movement modes, Drive and Default. Drive mode is suitable for quick movement across open maps, but it can be fatal in urban zones. The smallest mistake can lead to a skid, crash, and hello, garage. That's why it is better to use the default mode in urban zones. The speed might be lower, but maneuverability is similar to light tanks. It's not as likely to skid and offers better vehicle control. Movement modes don't give you as much of a noticeable advantage or difference in vehicle behavior at Tier 8, as with the higher tier vehicles. But they still allow players to get used to having and using them. Regarding the armament, we will test guns from 75mm to 90mm on these vehicles. And this gives a good chance for high damage. Another Tier 8 vehicle is the Premium, the Panar EBR. Yes, the one that won the competition against the Hotchkiss EBR to be mass-produced. Its testing will also start soon, and its technical characteristics will be set up. One of this vehicle's design features was the oscillating turret. This let us install a gun with an auto-loading system inside. It's not really a full-fledged auto-loader as it only has two shells. Play logic is simple here. Roll out, fire two shells at the enemy on the move, and get out of the line of fire. Other Pinars will have the usual cyclic loading system. Now let's talk about the really fast and serious vehicles. At Tier 9, the Panard EBR-90. Wheel arrangements four axes and eight wheels, a 90 mm gun, great dynamics, and a maximum speed of just under 100 kilometers per hour. Thanks to its design features, the vehicle can move forwards and backwards at the same speed. The difference between movement modes can really be felt in this one. You have to choose between the maximum speed in a straight line or high maneuverability. Tier 9 is going to be quite interesting, but like always, the best is left for Tier 10. At Tier 10, a masterpiece among all wheeled vehicles, the Panar EBR-105. A 105mm gun wasn't mounted to these vehicles, so we had to rework the turret and suspension designs to make it possible. We also worked on the vehicle's exterior. It received additional body kit elements from vehicles that are still in service. However, the differences are not only on the outside. The vehicle will get the highest maximum speed ever seen in the game, 
around 110 kilometers per hour, as well as the biggest difference in the speed between movement modes. Its equipment will match the top vehicles. The 105 millimeter gun will allow for destroying lower tier targets and having a fair fight with same tier vehicles. Combined with other features of wheeled vehicles, the Pinar EBR-105 will be a formidable active scout in-game. This is what the branch looks like. These vehicles are made for spotting, and they are not supposed to compete with the existing light tanks. They will not take their positions and will behave differently. They have higher speed, lower view range, and worse gun parameters. These characteristics will make them spot more actively and not play like current light tanks. The vehicles will get their initial technical characteristics and will be tested on the super test. Over the next couple of months, we will adjust their settings in several stages and then add one of the vehicles to the next update to test it in release. It will help us collect more correct statistics on how this mechanic affects the game ecosystem as a whole. Their characteristics will change several times during this time, and their final settings will be announced just before final release. We will keep you updated on the wheeled vehicle's changes. Stay tuned!